There are many who carry certain religious aspects, whether you're a Christian, atheist, Buddhist, or just generally open-minded. There's always one name that everyone knows. Lucifer. Or, you know, whichever one of his many names he's referred to as. And there is one thing that's certain about him. He is everywhere. However, it's probably safe to bet that what brings out his allure so much in movies is because fans await every second for the release of movies that have to do with him. Devil here, devil there, the unholy title alone could potentially give a person a bit of grief just by merely mentioning it, if you know what I mean. I need, I need, I need, I need a sign, I need, I need something. Daniel Espinoza, <laughs> your prayers have been answered. Lucifer. I am not Lucifer. So why is there such a massive tendency to seek out themes in movies and series referring to the Fallen One, the Archangel who rebelled against God? And if the title contains his name with much more attachment, fans actually seem excited to pay to see the movie, even if the ending is utter crap. He's commonly referred to as the Lord of Darkness, but if you think about it, hell would probably be pretty lit up with all that fire. Which, speaking of fire, isn't it weird that he lives amongst flames, yet in almost every movie the demons are burned to death? Kind of feels like an oxymoron. Anyway, getting back on track, there's a film that has captivated everyone for a long time. Not only because of its title alone, but also because its cast is excellent, and it includes a class of citizen that probably represents evil more than most. Lawyers. Yes, that's right, I'm talking about The Devil's Advocate. This 1997 film is a classic of its genre. It's quite out of the ordinary of what we would typically see when it comes to demonic films. Welcome back to Patrol Clip Minions. Today, we're gonna review some of the hidden messages found in this cinema classic of the most famous villain of all. We think you'll be astonished with the things that we'll show you that you may not have noticed. But before we begin, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to stay up to date on all things Patrol Clip. Also, don't forget that if you do subscribe and leave us your email, you'll receive a free PDF on how to become a successful social media influencer. Here we go! Fiery red is everywhere. When we mean that the color red is everywhere, it's literal. Red here, red there, even more red here. But it's not the common red that we see in real life. It's more of a strong red that has been highlighted throughout the film in a particular way to attract attention, and also, we all know that red is fairly synonymous with fire and therefore is indicative that our world is invaded by it. Even the dresses worn by Christabella Andrioli, played by Connie Nielsen, are representative of her demonic role because of the intense red. Later on, of course, we do get to see that other colors do appear, giving clear and different messages. Green. Speaking of other colors, just as red appears in all scenes brilliantly, green was also an essential part at the beginning. This color eventually makes its appearance again in moments during Mary Ann's stay in the hospital, where the presence of Kevin's mother fills the walls with green, clearly showing, I guess you could say, hope for him, even though he does lose his better half. Confusing names. If we think about a movie involving Satan, those who are his closest subjects would most likely attract attention with their names. Perhaps maybe because names of demons are just naturally more terrifying. But if we take a closer look, especially at one of the collaborators closest to John Milton, aka the devil, played by Al Pacino, does anyone remember the one who approached Kevin inside the bar to offer him the opportunity? Milton Chadwick Waters. Never heard of it. He's a peculiar character, since being African American with a not so usual name. Lehman, or rather Lehman, which means beloved man. Now, this is a very curious name, because Lehman is the name of a Jewish male descendant, and its meaning goes against the parameters of the plot, since it means belonging to God in Jewish. Sounds kind of unreal. 
I suppose if you're going to hang with the Dark Lord, it's best to keep something divine on hand. But then again, Lucifer was God's first angel, according to lore. Oh, choose. There's a scene where Milton invites Kevin to his personal borderless terrace, having their first meeting. They go out into the open, where Kevin starts freaking out as he walks along the edge. I don't think it's easy anywhere. Holy shit. In one of these moments while they're walking, Kevin notices Milton's shoes. Now it's odd because the movie leaves no indication as to why he's surprised to see these shoes, which appear to be from the 70s. Uh, apparently, Kevin is surprised that such a well-known lawyer from the late 90s is wearing 70s shoes with higher heels. We're thinking the idea is that, being a very old entity, he simply preferred to wear these particularly old shoes. But if you have any other thoughts, leave them in the comments below. Felipe Moya's reaction. There are many particular scenes in this movie, and they all reflect the struggle between God and his arch enemy. Now, it is logical that demons undoubtedly fear the word and everything that has to do with holiness, as the sheer power of the Almighty would make almost anyone tremble. And that's just how we see the demons on the scene during the trial of Felipe Moyes, an immigrant with a culture of rituals involving animal blood, of course for the worship of Satan. We can clearly see that during the trial where Kevin defends him, Kevin mentions how his sacrifices can be compared to the conversion of wine into the blood of Jesus Christ. Now this makes Moyes' eyes open as if they wanted to pop out of his face. ...that wine transforms into blood. Some people handle poisonous snakes to prove their faith. This would most likely indicate the reflection of the demon's fear of the divine. Are you afraid, Felipe? Light in the darkness. The evil darkness does not support the divine light. We don't want to say that there is a message about the fact, but we can verify that within this dark plot and with all the demons everywhere, that light prevails. During Kevin's walks with Milton through Chinatown, we clearly see a young man carrying a white box with the letters Halo Lighting, passing behind and staying for a while between the two protagonists. Now this is actually a home interior lights and lamp company, but in addition to the brand's position, it seems to be a message that this relationship could be illuminated by God for its true struggle. But what do you think? The devil reveals himself. It's incredible how in this scene, Milton clearly reveals to Kevin who he really is. So clear that there's no way it couldn't be obvious. But of course, Kevin doesn't put the pieces together that he's right in front of, you know who, as he introduced himself with the remark, here I am, underestimated from day one. Underestimated from day one. You'd never think I was a master of the universe now, would you? These words were said to him during his first walk through the city, and of course he emphasizes to him that, quote unquote, they never see him coming. Come on, Kev, this puzzle ain't that hard to solve. More red in the environment. For those who have seen the film, you may recall the great reception offered by one of the collaborators who live in the Milton building, Eddie Barzoon, played by Jeffrey Jones, where Mary Ann asked Kevin not to leave her alone. Yeah, well, everything there turned out to be wrong, and Kevin leaves her to meet with the team for a new case. Now, remember that red is everywhere in this movie and what it symbolizes. So when Kevin arrives back at the apartment, we see the hallway light up completely red at the entrance. Uh, don't suppose that a red light would be suitable for a hallway in a building, do you? Unless it's part of like a nuclear bunker or something. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there, though. Marianne gets pissed, and we see again inside the apartment that one of the rooms turns totally red, indicating the impending arrival of hell on Earth. I was all by myself for three whole hours. The next time you make a promise, you try and keep it. You gotta be kidding me, right? You can go to hell. You can go sleep on that fucking couch. Lovely. Money. You know what they say. Money is the root of all evil. In The Devil's Advocate, money is mentioned as a critical part of Kevin accepting the position, but there seems to be a message that you might not have noticed. During one of the nights out with Milton, they attend a boxing fight with Mike Tyson, where Don King approaches to greet them, and when introducing Kevin, we can see Milton holding a stack of bills behind Kevin's back. But then in the next scene, they are gone. So, uh, hmm. 
Is this a scene error, perhaps? Or could it be that they intended to put in a betting scene but ended up changing it later? We think it's a subliminal message of how money can become a tool for the devil and Milton uses it. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. Colors. Now, I think that we have touched on the issue of colors in this film and its messages quite well, but these go even further into leaving us a clear and visible image. When Kevin chases Marianne, who's running wildly to the church, we can see a sign that clearly says mixing messages in different colors, specifically the ones that we already mentioned. Now that's kind of weird, right? Because this sign does not make any sense at all, unless they are giving us the very clear message to pay attention to the colors in the film. <laughs> that's pretty sneaky. Satan Street. After the death of Marianne, Kevin leaves the hospital and is awaited by Pam, Milton's personal assistant. The red color appears again clearly and brightly, but this time the street is desolate, as if entering the world of Milton where time stands still. But not only that, it also has his name right on the entrance. If we look closely at the name on the right, we see Sutton. Or do we? Did you spot it? The Ritual. The final confrontation between Milton and Kevin presents us with a scenario where he wants to have a child by having Kevin breed with his own sister, Christabella. But wait, is that Christabella playing with, what is that, knives? Um, besides, we're going to write our own book, chapter one. Apparently, after the act, the ritual was to kill Kevin since he would not be useful anymore. Tough luck, Kev. Well, guys, that's all we have for hidden messages from the Devil's Advocate. If you have any others that you feel we missed, let us know in the comments below. And, of course, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share, and ring that little bell for all things Patrol Clip. And until next time. <laughs>